Hello. It's been a while since I recorded anything, and this topic is a little sensitive to me. Recently, I had a falling out with a friend of mine in IRC that I actually grew up with over cryptocurrency, and I'd like to, one, call them out, and two, explain my stance on cryptocurrency and things like environmental impact and things like that. I'm not going to break down the environmental impact of any cryptocurrencies or anything like that. I'm going to break down the sociological and economic impact that things like cryptocurrency can have on somebody that's endured multiple generations of poverty like myself. This is going to possibly be a long video. It might also be very short. So, recently, I made a good investment. Back in February... I bought enough New Cypher to make a $400 profit when New Cypher spiked two weeks ago. I was happy about this, and I told some of my friends in older IRC channels that had been recently migrated to Libera Chat from Freenode, and basically got called a piece of shit by a long-standing friend of mine that I've known since elementary school. What really bothers me about this is the fact that I helped this person get into tech and this person also has been very well off their entire life, unlike me, who's grown up poor their entire life. I think that it's absurd for these people with these six-figure salaries to come in and try to preach to people like me or people in countries like El Salvador about how them buying and trading in cryptocurrency or even transacting in cryptocurrency it somehow makes them a piece of shit because they have this perceived negative economic and ecological impact that all of these cryptocurrencies have. I'm not here to downplay the ecological impact of the industry as a whole. By the industry, I mean facilities for large data centers, large data networks, air conditioning those networks, just the power draw in general, but it's not just cryptocurrencies that have these issues, and so that misses the point entirely. For someone like me, making $400 off of an investment is insane. Um, it's, it's a thing to celebrate, regardless of what the investment was. I didn't rip anyone off. I made a smart decision. I paid attention to market trends. If I had more money to invest, I'd probably be doing very well right now. But my issue with this is that this is the future, whether or not you like it. And by copping out and insulting people that are involved with it and making money off of it, you're removing yourself from the conversation without contributing to it. You cannot impact the negative aspects of cryptocurrencies and blockchain if you remove yourself from this conversation and put your fingers in your ears and act like you're right and everyone else is wrong. There are a lot of smart people behind these projects. There are also a lot of greedy people behind these projects. And what we need to do is give a voice and contribute to the smart people that want a fairer way of doing transactions. And if we're not going to do that, then you are removing yourself from this conversation and you should remain silent about it. I've grown up poor my entire life. My family is poor. I currently am living at my mother's house because I'm going blind and I don't qualify for disability. That means that I'm currently sleeping on a couch. And someone having the audacity to talk to me like I'm less than them because I made a financial decision that they didn't agree with and I was happy that it worked out for me is very upsetting. It's even more upsetting because it's someone that I respected. And a lot of you are people that I respect that have come at me with these negative takes on my take on cryptocurrency or my take on blockchain engineering and things like that. You haven't even tried to hear my side of why I'm in support of this technology, which in the end, it's because these technologies encourage a collaborative effort and mutual co cooperation within developers. And the ones that don't do that are going to be the ones that don't succeed. That's why I'm a strong backer in Ethereum. That's why I'm a strong backer in proof of stake over proof of work. But we will always need 
people communicating with each other to have any sort of economy with these currencies. I think that it's very dehumanizing to approach someone like you know better than they do without knowing the situation that they're in. And if you can't approach a situation in a way where you have mutual respect for the person you're talking to and in a way where you are acknowledging that they might know something that you don't know, you are being ignorant. And it's very easy for a lot of you people working in free and open source software or information security to sit here and espouse these communist and socialist ideas on your six-figure salaries while people like me who are barely making a thousand dollars a month because the industry is not cooperative with people with mental illnesses or people with visual disabilities and visual impairments it, it really really is off-putting to those of us especially myself who many people that communicate with me know i am a talented individual in these fields um for me to get involved and collaborate with some of you anymore because you're not willing to have any sort of civil conversation about anything and it's an I'm right you're wrong philosophy when it doesn't matter how smart you are there's always going to be someone that knows more about something than you do and that's why I approach these situations in a way that I can learn from you, but I can also learn from the people that are in support of these things that you're against because you cannot get a clear perspective on these situations without knowing both sides when you don't know anything about it. In 2011, I bought five Bitcoins. In 2015, I sold five Bitcoins at $1,034 per coin. And the reason why I sold those coins was because I was on the verge of being evicted from my home because I was out of work. And I was working in Second Life, where I'm logged in right now, and some script kiddies sent me $20,000 in stolen money on PayPal, which got my PayPal account restricted for six months, and me involved in an Interpol investigation for money laundering, which my tweet tonight to Second Life's Twitter account was actually about because these three individuals are still operating freely on this platform. And a level of transparency with cryptocurrency on a platform like Second Life would enable Interpol or any other policing agency to do a graph traversal about where this money is coming from and where it's going and allow them to pinpoint these people much quicker. That's one of the beauties of blockchain engineering is a level of transparency. Once again, I'm not... Be not ignoring the environmental impact sorry i had to get my thoughts i'm just saying that there's going to be an inverse or a negative impact on any financial institution but at least there is a level of transparency here and unfortunately the level of transparency is rather ugly you have bitcoin which ha consumes uh more power than the entire country of pakistan for example or the Philippines. That's not great. We can do better than that, and we need more renewable energy in order to do that, but at least we can see where the money's going. Um, and it unfortunately appears that wealth consolidation is still going to be a problem with networks like Bitcoin, but with Ethereum being newer and better thought out, in my opinion, we can see some of these things tackled in a more modern way by smarter people i had a lot of name calling and things that i wanted to originally include in this video that i'm going to exclude because i feel like it doesn't bring anything to the conversation the reason why i picked to record this in second life is because i've been carrying out transactions in virtual currency for over a decade as you can see here even though this is about two dollars used to make a lot of money uh, building things for people in Second Life and I was paid for labor but there's no level of transparency for these transactions because they all take place in a closed source environment where all you can see is that there's money and this equates out to a real world do dollar value somewhere down the line and that I have to pay taxes if I make high enough gains when I'm cashing this money out I recently cashed out about $200 and so I'm slowly building back up. I don't make nearly as much money as I used to in this. But I guess more what I'm getting at 
is that I feel like a lot of you have a very easy time criticizing those of us that don't make a lot of money while you sit there on your cushions and corporate funding and things like that and try to claim that you're not a sellout anymore. And it's not that I feel that you are a sellout. It's just you need to acknowledge your position and you need to do something productive with it to help with these networks because they are not going away. So we need to produce fair networks and fair ways to transact virtually and digitally. And I believe that cryptocurrency is the future, but first out the gate is usually not the one that wins the race when it comes to new technologies. So I don't believe that Bitcoin will be the predominant cryptocurrency if those of you that are on the fence right now get involved now and pick a currency or help develop a currency that is fair and that is economically and ecologically sound. And that is the direction that I believe Ethereum is going in right now. And New Cypher is a very good token for those of us that value our privacy because of its end-to-end -end encryption algorithm. We also have projects like LokiNet and Session, which are powered by Oxen and their incredible communication networks and onion routed relays and things like that and it's unfair to write off the entire blockchain because you disagree with the ecological impact of one cryptocurrency when there are thousands of them out there that don't have these issues michael i'm sorry if you feel like i called you out in this video i am still very angry with you and you're the only person i'm going to name drop because you would not be where you are today if it were not for me and I feel like the way that you spoke to me, me made me think that you feel like I am less of a person than you. My messages are always open if you want to reach out to apologize to me. Those of you other people that I still respect professionally, including you, Michael, are free to reach out to me at any time and engage in this discussion. And if you think I'm wrong, I will hear you out. But if you just give me the standard line of, oh, silicon shortages, oh, um, you know, electrical usage and things like that. I've heard it all, and Cambridge University has done studies on it and have found that it's less impactful than the traditional financial institution. That's all I really had to say about that. I'm still pretty sad about how my friend spoke to me. I will not name their username or anything like that. I will not drop a last name. I will never do that in a video, but I will name names so that people that watch my content know that I'm talking about them. And if they want to communicate with me after that, I will always be happy to do so. I'm always open to a discussion. I can be abrasive at times. I make mistakes at times. I've said some pretty awful things in my past. I was a borderline Nazi when I was a teenager. I admit to all that, but I do not see any fault in me making $400 off of an investment two weeks ago. I don't think that that makes me a bad person. I've done plenty of other things that could paint me as a bad person, and I'd like to think that I am a dynamic person and I can evolve from where I am now, which means that I could be wrong about what I'm talking about now, but I will leave this content up and I will never censor myself. And if I'm wrong, or I feel I'm wrong, I will post another video, or I will post something on Twitter, or I will write another blog post saying, I was wrong about this. But I don't believe I'm wrong about this, and I believe that if you feel I'm wrong about this, you need to engage in a conversation with me. And you need to engage in a conversation with people that are involved in contributing to these currencies, in these chains, in these protocols. Thank you.